is Zach Radke, and I'm a neurosomatic therapist here at the St. John Clark Pain Treatment Center in Clearwater, Florida. Today, I'm going to be talking about carpal tunnel syndrome. I'm going to explain what it is and what the symptoms are, some tests that you can use to assess yourself for carpal tunnel syndrome, muscles that are commonly involved and in need of treatment, conventional treatment and its limitations, how neurosomatic therapy can find the root cause, and stretches that you can do for self-treatment. Now, the carpal tunnel is something that everybody has, and it is formed by a ligament that crosses here on the palmar surface of your wrist. And it attaches to carpal bones here and here, and crosses over other carpal bones as well. And this ligament is called the transverse carpal ligament, and this makes a tunnel here, hence the name carpal tunnel. Now, this transverse carpal ligament is also known as the flexor retinaculum. And this flexor retinaculum holds the tendons of four muscles that are in the forearm and the hand. And these muscles are all flexors of the hand and the wrist and they help with these movements here. Now these four muscles separate into 10 total tendons. And these 10 tendons run through this carpal tunnel. And along with these 10 tendons, is the median nerve and carpal tunnel syndrome is inflammation within this carpal tunnel and of these muscle tendons causing compression on the median nerve and when this occurs the symptoms that you get are pain weakness tingling and numbness in your thumb index finger middle finger and the inner half of your ring finger so those are the symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome and again that's occurring from inflammation putting compression on the median nerve within this tunnel. Now there are two tests that you can do to see if you have carpal tunnel syndrome. And the first one of these tests is called Phelan's test. And to do this, you're gonna flex both of your wrists together like this. And you're gonna hold this position for 60 seconds. Now if you reproduce any of those symptoms of pain, weakness, tingling, or numbness in your thumb, index, middle, or ring finger, that is indicating that you have carpal tunnel syndrome and compression of the median nerve within the carpal tunnel. Another test is Tennell's test. In this test, you're gonna take two fingers and you're just gonna tap right here on the carpal tunnel on this side of your wrist here. You're just gonna tap like this. And if that reproduces any of those same symptoms, that is also indicating that you have carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, this inflammation within the carpal tunnel that's putting the compression on the median nerve, this can be caused by a few different things. One thing can be overuse or improper use of your hand and wrist. Um, the common thing that everyone thinks of and knows is the keyboard and typing and your mouse at the computer. Both of these can put improper and frequent use on this wrist. Um, that is one factor. Um, another factor is trigger points throughout your shoulder and arm that refer down into this wrist area. Now a trigger point is just simply a tight band of muscle, a nodule or a knot of muscle that when you push on it, it refers pain or other sensations to another area. And often a lot of muscles up in the shoulder in this area can refer down into the wrist. And the area that it refers to, it causes that area to be ischemic and have a lack of blood flow, which causes inflammation and swelling. So trigger points up here can refer down here, causing the inflammation within that carpal tunnel, putting that compression on that median nerve, causing you carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms. Now one of these very common shoulder muscles that causes these trigger point referrals into the wrist is subscapularis. A subscapularis is, is the front muscle of your rotator cuff. It actually attaches, if you look at me from behind, here's my scapula or my shoulder blade. And it's not the part you see here, but it's from this view for you right now, it's actually underneath the shoulder blade. So behind this, underneath this. And this muscle fills up that part of your shoulder blade or scapula, and then comes and it wraps around the front of your humeral head, of your humerus here. And 
and this is subscapularis, and this muscle has very common frequent trigger points into your wrist. And we've actually found this muscle on about 80% of our carpal tunnel syndrome patients, and we found it to be enormously successful in our treatment of their symptoms and getting them to reduce and go away. So subscapularis is just one example of a shoulder muscle that comes down to here, a very important one to treat. Another thing that can happen that's very similar that can give you the same median nerve entrapment symptoms is, is entrapment of the median nerve higher up than the carpal tunnel. So the median nerve actually starts up here in your neck from the C5 vertebra down to T1. Um, yeah, so up here to about here, and it comes out of your neck here, and then it passes under your collarbone or your clavicle, and it comes through here across the front of your chest into sort of your armpit here, and then down the inside of your arm here, and then right over the front of your forearm here, and then into your wrist and the carpal tunnel, and then your fingers. So that's the pathway. And not only can you have that compression on the median nerve right here causing your carpal tunnel syndrome, but you can have entrapment of the median nerve higher up the arm and into the shoulder and neck as well. Um, and a trained neurosomatic therapist is an expert in finding those entrapment points for you. Um, a couple of the very common ones are, there's a muscle here in your forearm called pronator teres. It goes from here to here, and this muscle causes pronation of your forearm, and this is a very common entrapment point of the median nerve. When this muscle is overactive and in spasm, it can, it can entrap the median nerve, giving you those same symptoms. Um, another muscle here that can do the same thing is flexor digitorum superficialis, and that's from here, down through your forearm, like this, into your hand and fingers. Both of those muscles, flexor digitorum superficialis, and pronator teres are very common entrapment points of the median nerve. So a trained neurosomatic therapist will be able to treat those for you and assess you for that issue. Um, higher up, you can have entrapment in your shoulder and your chest here with pec minor. Pec minor attaches on your coracoid process, which is a little bump right here. And this it's part of your scapula, actually, your shoulder blade in the back. It has a little part that comes out here. It's like a beak shape, and that's actually what it gets its name from coracoid. Uh, but it, yes, the pec minor attaches here, and then comes down onto your rib cage here, onto your third, fourth, and fifth ribs. And this muscle being tight is another very common entrapment point of the median nerve. And then up here in your neck is the scalenes. And these muscles on the side of your neck here. And this is another very common entrapment point. So a neurosomatic therapist is trained in treating all of these muscles for you and getting these out of spasm and compression and relieving that impingement on the median nerve. Now, conventional treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome consists of two options. Number one is bracing your wrist or wearing a brace on your wrist. Um, now this brace will keep your wrist in neutral position and will prevent it from flexing or extending too much or too often. Now this will help to bring down the pressure and the compression on the median nerve here in the wrist. Uh, the other option is surgery and this surgery is called car carpal tunnel release surgery. And in this surgery they actually make a small incision in the transverse carpal ligament here that creates the carpal tunnel and this little incision just allows more space and decreases the pressure in here. Um, and it's been found to be very effective in the short term for patients. Um, nearly all patients experience great results with this surgery in the short term. However, more than half of patients experience a full return of their pre-surgery symptoms within two years. So it has not been found to be a great long-term solution. Um, and with the bracing as well, in our experience what we found is that more than just keeping the wrist in neutral, we want to check out the rest of the arm and the shoulder and postural distortions up here as well. Because although you're taking off some of the overuse and improper flexion and extension here, uh, if you've still got distortions and patterns up here that are giving you trigger points and other things into your wrist here, 
that is still going to be your big root cause issue and um, the brace is just going to help but it's not really going to cure it and you're probably going to have to just keep wearing it all the time and it's never going to get better if you take off the brace permanently it won't go away without treating these other areas higher up. Now in neurosomatic therapy we take a thorough postural assessment of your entire body. It's actually an 84 point measurement system that we use and we chart it all on paper and this shows us distortions throughout your entire body. Now often a lot of our patients with carpal tunnel syndrome actually have distortions in other parts of their body even as far away as their hips and legs that are actually causing problems to ripple up through the rest of their body into their shoulder, arm, forearm, and hand and wrist. Um, so if you come see us, we can assess you fully and accurately for postural distortions throughout your body that could be the real root cause of your carpal tunnel syndrome. More than just working on the wrist and the hand alone, we'll check everything for you. Um, I do want to give you guys a couple of things that you could do at home right now that may help you out. Now I'm going to give you guys some stretches, but with all of these I just want to caution you to be very careful and take it very slow and easy. Start out very small and simple and work your way up over days and weeks. Um, doing these stretches before getting hands-on manual therapy treatment can actually exacerbate your symptoms, especially if you go too hard too fast. Um, the most beneficial, beneficial thing for you is to get hands-on manual therapy neurosomatic treatment that will calm down the muscle spasm in your muscles before you stretch them. Uh, this is the most proper way to restore you back to proper functioning. Um, but I'm just still going to show you guys a couple and now with all of these again just take it slow and careful and easy. Uh, now this first one is called nerve glides, actually a nerve stretch of your median nerve. And now especially with this one, this is the one you want to be the most careful with. Um, this is very easy to flare up into a more annoying problem or symptom if you're not very careful. Now to start off, you're just going to take, well you could do it with both hands unless you already know you've got it on one side, but this, you can start off just testing it this way. You're going to put your arms out like this. arms hands flat out like this and then you're just going to extend your wrists down like this and if either of those you feel pain tension tightness weakness tingling any of those symptoms in here and in your arm here that's indicating a need for this stretch but again you want to be very careful with that so now say I I feel that here I'm just gonna do it in this hand um, and you're just gonna Kind of do this slow pumping motion just like this. Just like two seconds slowly moving through it and coming right back and that's it. After you've done that for at least a several, several days, you can move on to the next step of, this is going to be hard with this angle, I'm going to do my best. Um, but basically, I'm not really going to be able to do it, but basically you would just stand on the wall right here. So there's a wall right here to my right, and I'm going to do that same motion. I'm going to put my hand on the wall. I'm just going to hold it on the wall there, and just hold that for like three seconds, take it off, and put it back. And once you've done that for several more days, and that's working well for you, then you can add in a stretch of your neck as well at the same time, going this way. And that, you're really going to feel that. Now with all of these, you want to just take it slow, it's two to three seconds at a time, and you come back, and then you repeat. Maybe up to ten times, I'm going to do more than that ever. Um, and just, again, transition through these steps slowly. Take your time with it. Uh, very important to do that. Um, let me see, another stretch is going to be a pec stretch, or chest stretch. Um, for this, you can just um, put your elbows out to the side, and. Put your hands and fists close to your ears and your jaw and your neck and then just move your elbows, rotate and move your elbows and your shoulders back. Just let me do it here, just like this. You're going to feel that in here. And again, two to three seconds at a time, come back and repeat. 
Don't ever go longer than two or three seconds. Come back and repeat. And then one more final stretch you can do. Uh, this is just going to be neck extensions, um, often with the tight pecs and chest here. Um, you're going to have hunched forward and head forward and head down posture like this. And so we just want to open up the neck here and your scalenes here and all this area here. And you can, you can add this in with the pec stretch if you want or on its own, but you just want to look up and lean back a little bit with your head. And again, just two or three seconds at a time, and that's it, and come back. So yeah, these are all some stretches you can do. Just take your time with these, be careful. Um, for the pec stretch, one more thing you could do, um, I showed you guys like this, but you could also use a doorway. And say there's, I'm in the doorway right here, and there's a frame of a door right here. I'm gonna put my arm, my forearm on the frame. I'm gonna take my leg and foot of the same side and lunge forward and then my torso is going to follow forward. The door is going to be holding this here. That's going to give me a stretch here. And when you do this, you want to make sure you got the same side leg forward and that you're not rotating in like this, but you're staying flat. And you're just going to do that. Again, two, three seconds, come back, do it up to 10 times. So those are some good stretches that you guys can do. But again, I highly recommend you do come in here we can get some thorough hands-on treatment first to calm down the muscle spasm. And that's really going to allow you to stretch more properly and effectively and safely as well. Now these stretches that I gave you guys may or may not help you to relieve your carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms. Again, everyone's posture and body is unique and different and that's why we do a full postural assessment here. Um, if you come in, we'll, we'll do that for you and we'd be happy to help relieve your pain and restore proper hand and wrist function for you. So give us a call today if you're interested. We'd be very happy to help. Thank you. Bye now.